is Innes Teague in County Kilkenny, affectionately known by all of the locals as the Garden of Eden. Now, as you'll know from the Garden of Eden, a couple got nabbed for pinching some fruit that wasn't rightfully theirs. Apart from that, it's the serenity, it's the peace, and it's the beauty that makes the Garden of Eden here in County Kilkenny, Innes Teague, one of the most beautiful and scenic places in Ireland. The Irish have a great phrase, that is, you don't have to be Irish to be Irish. And these parts were once the home of parents to one Michael Flatley, who, thanks to river dance, as the whole world now knows, has become the most famous traditional Irish dancer of all time. But this weekend, Inish Teague dances to a different tune. The peace and the serenity of this sleepy little country village in Kilkenny has been locked away for two entire days as Inish Teague plays host to the noise and the excitement of the first two rounds of the Dunlop Hill Climb Championship. We're a long way from Jordan Grand Prix and corporate awnings here. But there's nothing that the Grand Prix world can teach the Dunlop Hill Climb organisers about hospitality, and it's the Wexford Motor Club's turn to throw the party. And the bad night I had last night. Yes, this is truly a beautiful place, surprising them that some people seem in a terrible hurry to get out of it. a ride with Peter Brogan's escort, let me remind you that long before there were any permanent racing circuits in the land, the challenge of the hills excited drivers and spectators alike. For the drivers it's a chance to scare themselves rigid as they speed past natural hazards such as gates, lampposts and trees in the race against the stopwatch. For the locals, it's an opportunity to watch the mad men and women in their space-age contraptions, raking through their own backyards. The Dunlop Championship keeps this tradition alive. It may be relaxed between the runs, but it's serious stuff for the few seconds that you're in the racing car. Dick Bailey has made the switch from rallying to racing. Rallying, you can make mistakes and get away with it. You, you have loads of miles and loads of time. Hill climbing, it's all down to seconds or fractions of seconds. So you have to do everything right. One gear change missed and it's, you're in trouble. <laughs> and are the conditions good for you today, do you think? Uh, it's a bit greasy. I, I don't like it greasy, but they're, they're better for me anyway. But I don't like it greasy. I prefer sunshine. This remarkable machine, the Dax Turbo, what is it like to handle on the roads? A uh, little bit of an animal, too much horsepower, but I get used to it. I'm old. <laughs> I've had plenty of practice. <laughs> Dick is not just a competitor this weekend, he's also one of the Wexford Motor Club organisers. And the first thing that they have to deal with on Sunday morning is a corner that the cars won't go round. Well, the corner's so tight and with this bump on it here they're going to bottom out. Uh, and they show that log on them. If, if you come wide, they miss the bump, then you're going to be on the grass over here. So it's, it's, too, it's definitely too tight for single seaters, I think. Can you imagine this happening in Monaco? Norman Williams agrees to be the guinea pig, but it just doesn't work. Elsewhere, there would be lawyers called, a tribunal the organisers find, but in Innistig, you just roll the bales down the road and make another corner. A simple and effective Irish solution. There are seven classes in the championship, and class one is for the 1650 saloons and GTs. Stephen Giles is fourth in the class after the two days in his G3 Escort. Seamus Hobbs takes second on the first day and third on Sunday to lie third in the class championship.
Class 2 is for the larger saloons and Bernard Jones has a spirited climb on the second day to place him in fifth place in his class. David James, a bit slow off the line here, lies fourth. But he was second fastest on the second day. Peter McGinley must surely be on slicks. Anyway, it's effective. He's third in class two. Brian McGrath's beautifully prepared starlet goes as quick as it looks. He's runner-up on day one and third and signing to lie second in the championship. And here's the class two leader, John Sheehan. In his Sierra Cosworth, John tops the times on both days. The Fiat class is the budget class. Brian Redman is third in the championship in the Marks Models Ritmo. This amazing campaigner, Des Cullen, whose son Michael is the multiple Dunlop touring car champion, is second in the class. Only beaten by the person he shares the car with, Tony Murta. Very wise. The classic sports cars are loved throughout the land, and appropriately enough, they run on handicap. Morris Cassidy's V8 Pilot MGB GT is easily the fastest, but after all the sums are done, Morris and his roaring beast have to be content with third. Tony Cullen cocks his nose at the opposition to take second in handicap in his rare Mini Marcus. And the hero of the hour, as he very often has been in the past, is Frank Nutto in his seemingly indestructible Ford Special. Class 5, for Formula Libra cars up to 1600 cc. It's the hunting ground for Formula Fords and Formula Vs, but recently there have been some interlopers. Morton Lachlan heads up the hill in his Van Diemen, and he's been having a tremendous battle with Porrick Ford Jr. over the two days. Mort beats Porrick on Saturday, but Porrick reverses the order on Sunday. Porrick Jr., who hill climbs with his dad, has a slightly newer Van Diemen model. Michael Roach is spectacular in his Formula V. And his times are spectacular also. Nobody can accuse Michael of not having a go. He's third fastest in day one and runner-up on day two. Charlie Norton's U2 really looks the biz. And it does the biz also. Charlie is fastest on Saturday, and indeed 10th fastest overall. But on Sunday he has to give way to both Peter Dwyer and Michael Roach, dropping him to second in his class. And here is Mr. Consistency, Peter Dwyer, runner-up on Saturday and winner on Sunday to lead the Class 5 Championship. Air Massey's aging Van Diemen picked up Class 6 honours by being there when others were not. More of that later. And sadly, there's also a dropout in Class 7, and a very unfortunate one. Indeed, the current Dunlop champion, Richard Young. Richard is beaten by the smallest of margins on Saturday, but by mechanical maladies on Sunday. I don't think there's any other hill climb in Ireland at the minute that has the atmosphere that you have, say, in this particular hill climb here. Because everything is all around you, and it, it would really remind you, as you said, of Dunbar and going back in the old days. Very tight little hill going up there today. I drove it two years ago. I just drove it to, to uh, well, I got a free run up it. And I must say, you'd have to keep between the ditches pretty, pretty accurately. 
Now for the top ten in the championship, Cyril Lynch will have a curtailed weekend. He shares the Statoil Delta with Norman Williams and that can have its drawbacks. Mark Harris's performances in the Opel Corsa net him second in class one and ninth overall in the championship. Then comes Norman Williams. Norman is fastest in class six on the Saturday runs and seventh fastest overall. Day two, however, is a disaster. I said up the doctor and start. Norman is off the road further up the hill and it's a big accident. I suppose I was probably doing guts of a ton, I don't really know, but somewhere around about that and just for no particular reason the car just took off to the left and I was a passenger at that stage. And I fear that something broke, but I don't really know. I presume it. Well, you're in one piece. That's oh, the main I'm thing. in one piece, that's the main thing. We'll yeah. see you the next event. Absolutely. Carl Cleary can produce miracles in his Fork and Mini. It's basically a space frame mini with a fiberglass body uh, molded on top of a steel tubular frame. It's got a 1400cc engine which has about 120 brake horsepower. Uh, it, the whole car weighs about 496 uh, kilos and basically the power to weight ratio is very good, you know, and that's why it goes so well. Carl dominates his class, beaten only by the Class 7 cars such as Donald Griffin's Formula Opel. Donald has returned to the series, and after the two-day event, he lies in fifth place in the championship. Then it's Dick Bailey in the Dax Turbo. Dick is third overall in the first day and fifth on day two. And now for the top three. Horik Ford's mighty V8 powered Scott Climber is a brute to handle. The car, which was originally designed and built by a Belfast architect, George Scott, has seen many successes on the Irish hills. It becomes a very narrow road when you have this kind of power, but Porig's two climbs put him in third place in the Dunlop series. Jenny Kennedy has already broken many records. She was the first lady to win a championship round and the first lady to become a champion in 1992. And this weekend, she's challenging for the lead. I've been in the sport now, oh, I'm sure nearly 30 years competing. And it's been a gradual process of building up to the level I'm in now. It's difficult to stay at such a level. And it's a lot of money has to be thrown at the car. So obviously we're on a very tight shoestring budget. We do our best. The cars never let me down. I hope it doesn't let me down today. And I'll just go out there and do my best. Her best is brilliant. Second overall in the championship, beaten only by this man, Ronnie Maben. The Mabens are a real motorsporting family. Ronnie races, hill climbs and sprints. His daughter also races, and his son, Alan, is a mechanic with a Stuart Grand Prix team. This weekend, Ronnie takes home all the prizes, fastest in both days, two new records, and the lead in the Dunlop Hill Climb Championship. In a steak awaits its heroes, and the party is only beginning. Congratulations, how are you feeling? Very good, very enjoyable. But I'm disappointed Richard didn't get going. Missed the opposition. Very good day, enjoyed it very much.
you're a smiling lady this evening. Jenny, you well right? done to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's hard work. Worth it. You were telling us earlier this morning, before you even started, that it was going to be hard work. Was it as hard as you reckoned it was going to be? Well, that last run was as fast as I think I would like to drive up there. It was getting to the stage of being a little bit on the hairy side. Well done, Ronnie. Well, as ever, another great weekend of motorsport draws to a close. It might give a whole new meaning to the expression hill climbing to those of you who weren't familiar with it. And it might also be worth looking out for the Oscar nominations next year as another fine RPM production joins the ranks of some of the greatest films in recent years. So until the next time, keep the revs up and eat your heart out, Maeve Binchy. <laughs>